Buccaneers should keep Jameis Winston for one more season. And here's why. A lot of people in this day and age of football, with all the fantasy football and things like that, a player gets judged on how good or bad they are by their stats. Nobody goes back and watches the games. All people do is look up a player and determine how good they are by the stats. James Winston, over 5,000 passing yards, 33 touchdowns, 30 interceptions, completed 60% of his passes. And a lot of people say that the Tim Bay Buccaneers should move on from James Winston. And they say he's not a good quarterback. And I think that's false. James Winston may not be the best quarterback, but he's definitely not one of the worst in the NFL. A lot of people just look at stats, and that's how they determine how good a player is. But if you go back and watch every single game Tampa Bay has played in, all third of those interceptions, out of eight of those interceptions, James Winston threw this season, were not his fault. Eight out of the third of those interceptions were either tipped or dropped passes by the wide receivers. Go back and watch. A good instance of this is, I recall, the second time the New Orleans Saints and Tampa Bay Buccaneers played. James Winston hit O.J. Howard in stride across the middle. Ball hit O.J. Howard's hands, right? O.J. Howard bobbles the catch, goes behind his back, and gets picked off by Demario Davis. So, if we were to give James Winston an accurate measure of how many interceptions he threw, that's strictly his fault, the number would be 22. Which would, I believe that ties him with Baker Mayfield for the most interceptions this past season. Now, a lot of you guys might be like, JT, that's still a lot of interceptions. Yes, it is. But a lot of quarterbacks under Bruce Arians in their first season under the Bruce Arians offense throws a lot of interceptions. If you go back and watch Carson Palmer, his first year in Arizona, under Bruce Arians, he threw 22 interceptions. And Carson Palmer, I forgot what show it was. I think it was the Dan Patrick show or the Rich Eisen show. And Carson Palmer was asked the question, what's up with James Winston? And Carson Palmer said, under his first season with Bruce Arians, it's a very complex offense. It's a learning curve. It's not the most easiest offense to master. And under your first season, it doesn't matter how good of a quarterback you are, you're going to throw a lot of interceptions. Because Bruce Arians is a guy who believes in scoring fast, and he loves having big plays, right? So, anytime you throw the football, as much as Bruce Arians likes to throw the football deep, that comes with having a lot of turnovers. That, that's just the magnitude of it. The more you throw the ball deep, the higher chance you have of throwing an interception. Especially at the fact that you look at Tim Bay's offensive line. Tim Bay had one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. They had allowed 48 sacks. And James Winston was one of the most hit quarterbacks and most pressured quarterbacks this season. The offensive line that Tim Bay had this season was not equipped to handle the Bruce Arians offense. Let's not also forget that the fact that Tim Bay could not run the football. Tim Bay only ran the football 20% of the time. Or 25 or 26% of the time if you want to be a little bit more analytical. And they pass the ball over 70% of the time. Most of the play calls were running plays. They pass the ball nearly 70% of the time. And I'm not joking. You can go ahead and look that up. Tim Bay could not run the football. And he could not protect James Winston. So you tell me. Since Tim Bay Buccaneer fans think like they can do so much better at the quarterback position. You sign a guy like a Tom Brady or draft or sign Phillip Rivers or draft another quarterback, it's still not going to matter. You're still not going to have a lot of success. Because no quarterback is going to be able to win games behind a terrible offensive line and no run game. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Don't tell me Russell Wilson. Don't tell me Deshaun Watson. Because both of those teams were able to run the football some way, somehow. Tampa Bay cannot run the football. A lot of people in life always have the mindset that the grass is greener on the other side. And sometimes in life it is. And sometimes in life 
The grass isn't always green on the other side. People quit their jobs. High paying jobs. Because they think they can do better. And they end up selling for a job that paid them less. You go from working a 24 hour job, a 20, a job that's paying you $20 an hour, quitting that job thinking you can do better. And instead, you go from making $20 an hour to making $14 an hour. So the grass isn't always greener on the other side, Tim Bay fans. Look at your team. Look at your roster. You think Phillip Rivers is going to make a difference? Phillip Rivers has played with bad offensive lines and basically had no running game for the duration of his career other than the days of LaDamian Thompson. But other than LaDamian Tom when LaDamian Thompson left L.A., they didn't have no run game. It was non-existent until Melvin Gordon. He had no offensive line. So you're going to sign Phillip Rivers, a guy who had who was a turnover machine for the Chargers this year in his own right, and you think he's going to make a difference, put him in the same situation that he was in with the L.A. Chargers. He had weapons with the Chargers. He had receivers with the Chargers. And he still didn't do that good. And he's about to retire. He's on the end of his career. And you want to put a guy like a Phillip Rivers behind the offensive line that allowed four day sacks, and an offense that can't run the football. You want to sign Tom Brady and put him behind the offensive line that allowed 48 sacks and can't run the football. You want to sign Teddy Bridgewater and let him play behind the offensive line that allowed 48 sacks and can't run the football. You see, a lot of people need to realize that Jameis Winston is not their entire problem for Tampa Bay. Let's not also forget to mention the kicking woes that Tampa Bay suffered from this season. Tampa Bay, a lot of those games that they lost came down to field goal kicking. If they had a good field goal kicker, Tampa Bay probably could have been in the playoffs right now. But they're not. The defense folded on several occasions earlier in the season. They lost to Seattle because the defense could not hold Russell Wilson the last two minutes to win the game. So, Jameis Winston, I believe, deserves one more year with a good offensive line and a run game and see how good he can be. You see, you can't judge a relationship based off the first date. Some people do, some people don't. You can't judge how good somebody is in the NFL off one season under a new head coach. You can't judge a professional athlete based on what they do in year one. Year two is always the deciding factor. Jameis Winston. Everybody always talks about the bad about Jameis Winston, but nobody talks about the good. Nobody talks about how he somehow has been able to will Temple to seven wins despite having one of the worst offensive lines in football and a non-existent run game. Nobody, men nobody mentions the several four-quarter comebacks that he's led Tim Bay in. Several, right? But people nowadays, with all the new fantasy football stuff and all the stats and the new analytics and numbers that we have, we just look at Jameis Winston and say he's a bad quarterback. And Tampa Bay should move on. But nobody goes ahead and nobody watches the film. Nobody goes back and re-watches the games. We just look at the stats and we just determine how good a player is based off those stats. Stats do not tell the full story. Yes, Jameis Winston is a turnover machine. But under the Bruce Aarons offense, that's what's going to happen. That's what happens when you have a super aggressive quarterback with a super aggressive head coach. But not all 30 of those interceptions were Jameis Winston's fault. But nobody wants to admit that. The media is just so biased towards Jameis Winston that it's just simply unfair. Nobody, nobody is watching the games. Nobody understands the Bruce Arians offense. You throw the ball downfield more than any team in the NFL, you're going to have an increased chance of throwing a lot of interceptions. So Tampa Bay should keep Jameis Winston for one more year. They have cap space. Give him a solid off the line. Get him a solid run game. And then let's see what Jameis Winston can do with a legitimate off the line and a legitimate run game. 
Let's see what Jameis Winston can do under the best circumstances instead of under the worst circumstances. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.